What's up, Mortgage Coach community? Dave Savage coming to you live. I'm interviewing someone that I've had the honor to have in this community. I think this will be the third interview, Patrick. Does that sound right? That sounds about right, Dave. Yeah, but it's it's been a pre-COVID relationship. We haven't seen each other in two years, but you came out with a great new book. I loved the title, The Trusted Way, uh, something that I've I have studied that, you know, a lot of my adult life. Of course, my good friend, Todd Duncan, has a great book, um, High Trust Selling. Fantastic uh, book. Yeah, no, you and I, when we were doing the prep, you you brought it up. That it's something that you're a, you're a big fan of as well. Uh, and I just think we are in a market right now where the interest rates have gone up 2%. Uh, getting a home in escrow has never been harder. You know, housing prices are up. Uh, consumers are, you know, concerned that, hey, is this the top and what's the future look like? And anyways, there's just a lot of uncertainty. And I, I do think we're in one of those markets where the trusted way is, has never been more important. I also think that um, from a fitness sales fitness standpoint, the mortgage industry is very out of shape. Possibly loan officers are the most out of shape in over a decade. Uh, certainly the most out of shape in the past two years. So you're a perfect guest um, to like talk about relationship building, talk about trust building. So why don't we start, Patrick, with just why did you write this new book? Well, The Connector's Way, which we talked about last time I was uh, speaking with you, Dave, uh, is about how to build a business one relationship at a time. And I'm really happy it got me out in the world talking to a lot of mortgage folks, a lot of people in many industries. And people who looked at that book, got ideas out of it and applied them. Some said, wow, this is great. You know, this is really helping me out. Others, not so successful. And it's been kind of my struggle in the last five years to figure out, well, what's the difference? And the real difference when it comes to relationship building is when people do relationship building as an activity and they don't have a solid foundation of trust, sometimes the person on the other end, whether it's someone you're selling to, whether it's someone you're looking for a referral from, they perceive you as a manipulator, trying to manipulate them into doing something in your favor. If you have trust, no, not at all. I mean, they understand that there's a relationship that you've earned, you've developed social capital. And when you have asks or you're looking to, to, to grow your business, it just seems like it's an organic part of the process. So I realized that in the connectors way, I didn't address the issue of trust head on. I sort of assumed that it would be there if you're a relationship builder. And what I learned in talking to people is some people have it, others don't. And I realized I could write another book, another parable. Some of the actually the same characters that I used in my first book are in the second book. And to share this journey of how do you develop trust? Uh, because it's something that, um, you know, a lot of us have to learn the hard way. And if I can help some people from making the mistakes that I've seen many make, including myself sometimes, uh, why not? So that was the, the impetus for the new book. Well, I, I am excited to see where this conversation goes. So when I first met you, you were referred to me by, and I can't remember exactly who the loan officer was, but you've you've spoken at a lot of, um, I've, I've seen you at Credit Union. You and I have actually shared a stage for Credit Union, some banks, some lenders. Mm -hmm. uh, and you are speaking at a lot of sales rallies right now. Is that right? I mean, you're still out there? Yeah, I'm, st I'm still out there. Recently, a cross-country mortgage uh, in Denver. I was at Plaza Home Mortgage down in San Diego for their National Correspondent Lending uh, Sales Conference. Uh, we continue to work with Fannie Mae, our largest client. So we're coaching their relationship management team on developing trust-based relationships. So yeah, I'm still out there, still doing stuff. Well, there you go. I mean, if Fannie Mae trusts this guy to, to, to be a trainer and speaker, you guys can too. So this is going to be a really real treat for you guys. I want you to you know put down your mobile devices. I think... It, it is every lead, every loan, every basis point matters more than ever. And the foundation of your ability to serve a client right now is trust. Uh, your ability to help them navigate the decisions they need to make for their family, trust is the foundation. So, so walk us through some of the principles that you think we should hear in today's message and uh, any, any takeaways. I mean, you know, the mortgage coach community, we're a community of advisors that that should be trusted, but just because you should be trusted doesn't mean you're going to be trusted. Yeah, right. And Dave, I just kind of tag on in addition to developing that trust with your customers, it's also developing trust with the people who refer business to you, the folks in the real estate community, folks in other industries that refer business to you, why you versus someone else. And more often than not, it comes down to 
hey, you know what, I could go with three or four different loan officers, but I'm going with Dave or I'm going with Sam because they've developed trust with me over time. Um, so trust is such a big topic. I mean, this is something that goes back thousands of years. Um, what I decided to do was to bring something to life that has been around for about 90 years. Uh, and I leaned into something that's been very important for me and my own understanding about trust, which is Rotary International. I have been a Rotarian for a decade. And there is a trust standard that developed during the Great Depression that was very popular back in the day, uh, in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s, and it's kind of fallen off. And I realized that in my own business life, it's had a dramatic impact on me. And it's a 24-word statement about trust, which I have my characters in, in my book, The Trusted Way, actually you know, getting involved with. And I can tell you what that statement is, but basically it really cuts very much to the center of what trust is all about. And I think a lot of times we can get very complicated, we get too academic, but I think sometimes simplicity, the simplicity of relationship building rules, the simplicity of what's called the four-way test, very, very important. Um, so I'm happy to go into that. If you want me to recite it, I can. Are you uh, kidding? I'm gonna I, like I'm not gonna have you recite it after that. Come on, brother, recite it. Let's well, test you. Okay, okay. So before I recite, let me give you a little backstory here because it's actually very cool. 1932, a guy takes over a company that is going into bankruptcy. The bank creditors put this guy in charge of the company. He realizes 1932, third year of the Great Depression, he can't cut prices. They've already been cut to the bone. He can't have more of a product offering because his company is broken, busted, and they sell cookware. So pots, pans, utensils, that sort of thing. And he realizes that his niche is he's going to be the most trusted company in that industry. And he doesn't know how he's going to do it. So he goes out, reads a lot of books, looks at academic literature. And he really is kind of perplexed. It's all too complicated. And one day he's at his desk late at night, kind of burning the midnight oil. He starts praying and he has this vision of what it takes to be a person who's trusted. And he decides that he's going to use it to guide him on all the things he thinks, says, and does. The guy's name was Herbert Taylor. The company was Club Aluminum Products. And what he wrote down, 24 words, hasn't changed since 1932. First thing is, of the things we think, say, or do, is it the truth? Is it the truth? The second thing is, is it fair to all concerned? The third thing, will it build goodwill and better friendships? And the fourth, will it be beneficial to all concerned? And he starts living by that mantra himself over the course of two months. All of a sudden, these very complicated issues, these big decisions he's making regarding personnel, regarding products, regarding a series of things become much clearer to him. He decides he to introduce it to his team members. He wants to make sure he's not pushing his values. He's a very Christian guy, but he has a lot of Christians, non-Christians working for him. He wants to see if they agree with it. They had no ethical standard before. They say, hey, we could run with this. Long story short, five years, company gets turned around. It becomes profitable. 10 years later, the most profitable in his niche. He then goes on, leads this large international service organization, Rotary, the biggest in the world deeds this copyright of this four-way test to Rotary, and it rolls out across the country. To this day, Walgreens, the big, the big drugstore company, that's their ethical standard. It is very simple, and the simplicity is its power. So when you're making decisions, when you're trying to figure out what you're going to say, when you have a difficult thing that you're wrestling with, what I ask is, what prism do you run things through? I like this. It's really saved my bacon. A few times when I didn't have it, I wrestled with things that I shouldn't have wrestled with if I knew this statement. So very, very simple. Some people say, well, it's too simple. I say, okay, well, what do you use instead of this? If you don't have a trust standard to hold yourself to account that you can recite, just like I whipped it out there, got the 24 words right spot on, then you really don't have something that's going to keep you honest, so to speak, and keep your team members honest and make sure that you have that solid foundation for your relationships. So first of all, that was incredibly powerful. And I want to almost turn this into a workshop. I mean, I could tell the audience, hey, if you want to write that down, go back, you know, pause and play it back. But I want to go slow through it really quick, statement by statement, and 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 just workshop a little bit with the community. Sure. Yeah. So read the first one again. True. Is it the truth? Okay. Is it the truth? So let's think about that, guys. How many times have we said something, it's a fact or a truth? but it's just a perspective, you know, it's just a, it's not necessarily a fact or true. It's, 
so that's a it's a slippery slope mm -hmm. but i think everybody needs to challenge themselves is it true um i'm going to always tie things back to mortgage coach because math doesn't lie and and you're able you know right now there's a lot of consumers that are worried about appraisal gaps or they're worried about what's going to happen in the market and while they may not know the truth and you don't know the fact we have assumptions. Mm -hmm. So I just want to remind you guys, don't, when it comes to having those conversations with clients, don't, don't lead them. You know, like when you ask them, Hey, what do you think is going to happen to rates? And you want their answer to be rates are going to be higher because you're trying to create a sense of urgency for people. Don't, don't lead them. Just ask them, Hey, what, what do you think is going to happen with interest rates? Yeah. Pause. What do you, what do you think is going to happen with values? Pause. We lose so much trust when we try to get people and we lead them, you know, mm -hmm. and, and to, and by the way, their, whatever their assumption is, isn't truth. It's just their assumption. So I, I wanted to just unpack that one. Anything you want to say before we go to the next? Yeah, no, it's, a, it, it's interesting. I love how you're making it relevant for your community. I can absolutely see what you're doing with that. Not, don't lead people down a garden path. That's going to get them to something that isn't the truth though. I mean, you definitely want them to, um, you kind of want to, you want to take them in, in the direction that will lead them to, um, to the truth for, for who they are and what they need to decide on. Absolutely. Yeah. Cause, cause a total cost analysis can be really powerful and trust building, but it can also become poison. And if you literally tried to put words in their mouth or create an assumption that's your assumption, but not theirs, you've lost trust. Something yeah. that could be your most powerful trust building uh, conversation and tool could just become ruined if you, if you do that. Okay, what's number two? Uh, is it fair to all concerned? Got it. Is it fair to all concerns? I don't really have anything to add to that one. I think it's a good one. I like it. And I think this one, Dave, if you think about your community, it might be something that would really inform people as they're working with referral partners. Mm. Um, when you when you're doing something that is to your advantage, but not to the advantage of your referral partner, you know that is not going to be the basis of a long term relationship. And I think sometimes people are too anxious for the deal and not thinking sort of long term. So fairness, I think, for, for a lot of people, needs to be expanded beyond the immediate transaction. That's how I can make it, see how you can make it relevant. I, I, it is relevant, and that also reminds me of. Of something. I mean, I've always been a very, you know, win, win, you know, when someone else is winning, I'm winning. Um, but I do know some very successful people and I'm not going to call out names, but I, you know, one time there was someone who's very successful in our industry. And he said, like, my goal is, you know, when negotiating is to win, to get the best deal, but not to win so much that they don't want to do business with me again. And I thought to myself, I don't want to do business with you, you know, like, like immediately. So like, guys, the goal is win, win. And, and if you're winning just enough so that you're not blowing up a relationship, you know, that's, and I don't think there's a lot of people in our community doing that. So I yeah. think, I, I think that's a small group, but I just want to remind everybody, you know, I guess. It's, it's not a zero sum game. Yeah. 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 It's not a zero come. The more other people win, you know, the more you're eventually going to win big. Okay. Yeah. What's number three? So these are big, big ideas. And I love the way you're drilling into the specificity. It's, 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 that's very cool. So will it build goodwill and better friendships? Um, where And better friendships. So, so where my mind goes on that in the mortgage coach community, guys, is I've been talking a lot about how there is a financial literacy crisis in America. And, and our, our, you know, we don't get out of high school being financially literate. And I do... You probably haven't heard my rant on this, Patrick, but- I've been seeing it on social media and I love it. Okay, so maybe you, you do. So yeah. to me, as mortgage professionals, if, if you are that mortgage professional that's given back, going out to high schools, partnering with CPAs and financial planners, and you're helping high schools, colleges, if, if you're doing more than doing loans, you, you even have it upon your goal, like, like the way I do mortgage business, is I leave everybody a little more financially literate First of all, it's from the inside out. You're going to feel really good about yourself. So you're going to have a sense of confidence and pride that is uncommon in the mortgage space. And then doing loans really is good, better for the greater good. Like you're, you're helping change communities when you're doing more than loans. So I guess that's where my mind goes with that. Just trying to tie it to my mission of helping change how people get into debt and helping people make better decisions. 
I think if if loan officers were more than loan officers and they really provided education above and beyond that, they'd be living that principle. Yeah, and so let me just uh, piggyback on that. One of my uh, mentors is another parabolist, a, a guy named Bob Berg, who wrote a book called The Go-Giver, a great book. And uh, in his book, he says, uh, people want to do business with and refer business to those who they know, like, and trust. Uh, so it really comes down to, you know, thinking beyond just a transaction in that particular deal and really giving back to your community. Um, and I've met people in the last five years who do partner, pe mortgage people who partner with their local realtor, with their local insurance agent, and they're going out there, they're doing home buying seminars, they're doing financial awareness seminars. And when they... Uh, are out there talking about you know their business? They have that solid foundation of trust because they're seen as as someone who's developing social capital. And I think that developing trust, what you're talking about with your financial literacy, there's no better way to develop social ca capital in your community than by giving that that necessary knowledge because we live in a pretty financially illiterate society, unfortunately. And when you're seen as part of the answer to that it's going to skyrocket your trust levels, which is really foundational to your ability to build those relationships, whether it's with uh, your, your clients or, or the folks who refer business to you. Yeah. But I'm going to spin this another direction because, uh, you know, as I, as I said, I think the, the mortgage industry is from a sales skill and sales habit out of shape. If you're a branch manager listening to this, or you have any type of leadership role, uh, trust is everything. You know, like like when 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 rates go up two percent and your product gets worse, if you want to optimize retention of your loan officers and the trust that they have in you, you need to give back to them. And and are you doing sales meetings? You know, the greater good for all. Are you? Um, you know, I've been doing a lot of content on sales meetings. And for anyone listening to this, that you're a brown belt in mortgage coach or higher, you know, when it's tough like this, it's time to give back internally with your own team, you know, help people externally in a biz dev way, you know, like let's face it, helping high school kids is, it's good for society and it is giving back, but let's face it, you're going to get some loans from teachers, you're going to get some loans from parents. It's not like it's just a total good, do, do good thing, but, but guys go back and think about how can I, how can I live that principle by um, being a leader within my own team, you know, and bringing some of the skills I have to others. So cool. I'm, by the way, I'm loving this. What's, what's the fourth one? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? And this is always a controversial one because people say, well, sometimes there's usually someone who benefits more. Uh, so is that, does that really apply? I've, I get a lot of pushback when I talk to just wide business groups in this. And here's the thing. Um, you know, not everyone will always be appearing to benefit as much from a deal. But if you don't think about the benefit beyond yourself, I think you're on the road to perdition. Because I don't think there's any way to build a sustainable business without yourself asking that question, you know, how does this benefit more than just myself? So kind of going back to what we just talked about, um, it's kind of that deeper, more conceptual thing. And I think a lot of times, uh, especially in the mortgage world where people were transactionally focused during re during the refi movement, and that was fine. They could just do, you know, there was always another train coming, so to speak, another, another phone call coming in. Right now, if you're not asking yourself of that greater benefit, then I think um, it's just not a sustainable uh, way to, 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 to be in this new environment. Well, it's certainly not as fun and it's not as... Um... Fulfilling. So Absolutely. everything you're saying. So I, I love the idea of having a trust standard. Uh, I, it's not something I have thought about for a long time. I actually have never heard that term trust standard. So I heard it the first time from you just now. And I would push everybody in the mortgage coach community, like, what is your trust standard? And what are your trust practices? You know, like, mm -hmm. what are you doing? Um, and, and are you doing some things that might be um, hurting your trust? Like, like, like you're leading people, you know, like, hey, what do you think is going to happen to rates? So then you say a couple of words, trying to get them to say rates are going to go up or, or you frame it, you know, so that by the time you ask them, what do you think rates are going to do? You have already, they'd be like stupid if they said rates were going down, you know, like. Yeah, it's the same thing they do in political polling. It's called push polling, where you are basically, you know, you're polling, so to speak, but you're really kind of pushing whatever it is right, left on the agenda by the way you frame questions. And I think 
push polling is you could do it with anything. You could do it with mortgage. You could do it with politics. And it's it's insidious because when people figure it out, and ultimately people aren't stupid, they will kind of be on to you, and the word will get out. And you know, trust is built over time. Uh, slowly. It's not a single action that's going to make you a trusted individual, but you can lose it overnight. I mean, look at Enron. They were at the top of the world. And then in weeks, their name became associated with everything that you couldn't trust. So you can blow up your trust very fast. Um, and having a trust standard, I don't necessarily say, okay, everyone has to follow the four-way test. But what I want everyone to do is have that conversation and have that thought process, even if it's with yourself even if it's like articulating it for yourself. And if you're a company leader, having that conversation within your company, what is our trust standard as an organization? Because if you don't have it, then as far as I'm concerned, you're flying blind and hoping for the best. And I just think that you need to have that to measure yourself against, because without a measuring stick, you know, everything could be, well, you could justify it. But so I do want really to run a business. I do want to challenge something you said where sure. it takes time to create trust. And you know, when I founded Mortgage Coach, my, the problem I was trying to solve for, you know, well, the name of the company was called Wow Tools. So I was trying to solve for creating a wow moment at the point of sale where a consumer, but it was a wow moment to create trust. And, and so, you know, one of the things I learned in my founded mortgage coach is that when you would ask people questions beyond the norm, like every loan officer asks, Hey, how long do you want to be in your home for? And mm -hmm. that's kind of like code for, a five-year arm or a 30-year yeah, loan sure. or code for points or no points. But I would always ask people, well, you know, how, how old do you want to be when your home's paid off and you're, you're debt-free and free and clear? And, and with a real sincere, like, I'm curious. And by the yeah. way, I was curious, you know, what's your plan? You know, when yeah. do you want to have your home paid off? And, and, and here's the deal, guys, that question creates trust. One, no, most loan officers don't ask it. And two, it shows my interest in their long-term financial well-being, and and so you know there there are questions like that, and then and then also when you give someone rates and fees, and you you give them here's your payment, here's your cash to close, here's your interest rate, guys, that's common, that's that's a you know that's a rate quote, that's a transaction, but when you show them the cost of that loan over three years in five years, that's uncommon transparency. And so that triggers trust. So when you provide uncommon transparency, you ask questions beyond the transaction. And then the other um, thing that I built into the mortgage coach experience is showing strategies to pay off their home faster. Like, hey, what if you took this loan versus this loan mm -hmm. and you prepaid your loan, you know? And, and so community, all of those things create trust. You know, and not in a manipulative way. They, they're, you know, they're, they, they, but they create trust with someone, and um, and I just think it's important in today's market that you're using all those moves. You know, I, I, I agree. And what you're doing, what you were doing in the beginning, where you're asking people, you know, when do you want to have your loan paid off? I love that because you're sort of that is the key for Stephen Covey. You wrote the Seven Habits of Highly Effective Leaders. That is really in sync with his idea of start with the end in mind, and. I have never heard anyone talk mortgage with me in that way. Like, what is your end? It's not loan officer's end. It's my end, person getting the loan. I love that because that is a great foundational way to, to then, then measure everything, all that other advice and those other conversations around that, that final end, which is very meaningful for the borrower. So I, oh. I love that. Well, love and that. That's, that is the foundation of, of what we want to teach loan officers is that it's people don't get loans because they want loans. They get loans because they want homes. And they don't want to loan on their home for the rest of their life. Sure, you know they, the 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 real goal is financial freedom, and and so when you when you as a loan officer um, build in that, you know, like I'm going to help. My advice is going to help you achieve your financial freedom, or your financial goal, the best. Like you've changed the game on everybody else, guys. Yes. Um, so Patrick, let's do this. Um, you know, one of my goals is to one, see you on a lot of stages in the mortgage business, because I think uh, your message is really powerful and it will just make loan officers better people and better and more successful. So if someone wanted to hire you to come in and, you know, do a sales rally, or if they had a bunch of realtors in a room and they wanted to have you come and talk, which I think would be a good idea, 
um, how would they get a hold of you? Like, how would t- someone get you to come out and speak for them? The best thing is go to patrickgalvin.com. And then I have a topic section. I've got a mortgage and real estate. So a big event for me these days is actually speaking, not just to LOs, but realtors, anyone who refers business, insurance folks, financial advisors. I did one recently. There was a guy, a Ferrari uh, sales guy there. I mean, relationships are everything in all businesses. And it's something that some people are naturally good at but we can all get better no matter what our starting point is. And here's the great news. The best relationship builders are always the ones most willing to learn. So don't think, well, everyone on my team is really good. No, if they're really good, it means that they can get that much better. So that's the people who need it the most. So the ones most reluctant to sort of think about it, learn new ideas. So I love getting out there and just sharing this mantra of how do you go out there and build better trust-based relationships? So thanks you, Dave for- uh, Yeah, would you mind holding up your book real quick? Yeah, I'm actually hold up both books. So okay, yeah, this is the, the original, the original uh, 2016, this is 2021. And it's there, It's a three-part series. So there's a third one coming out next year. I guarantee you to have the word the way in it. I don't know the other word. I'm working on that right now. <laughs> Wait, um, hold, it, hold it back up. I want to just play off it. So community, go out and buy those books. Go ahead and pull it down. Yep. Uh, and I assume if someone wanted to buy the books, just go to Amazon and buy them? Or Yeah, absolutely. If they wanted just a single book, just go to Amazon. If they want more than 10, l- let me know. We'll give them a discount. But uh, yeah, single books, Audible, Kindle, um, print books, you can get them on Amazon. Yeah, so it's on Audible. We got it. We, I can I can listen to it. Uh, yeah, you, you can did actually you read listen it? to Connectors Way. It? Yes, I, I did Connectors Way. It's on Audible. Trusted Way, we're actually selling direct via our website. We didn't put it on Audible for commercial reasons. We thought it'd be better to own it as our own product. So okay. that one you get through our website, the Trusted Way. Okay, cool, cool. Well, hey, I really appreciate the time you took to come into uh, the Mortgage Coach community. Guys, follow this guy on social media. Um, buy a bunch of his books, the trusted way realtors need to have the trusted way right now. Like it's a, it's a, it's a very important time to do that. And I'm going to introduce you to Todd Duncan. I think you guys would get along really well. And uh, I mean, he, he has dedicated his life to building high trust selling methodologies in the mortgage space. And, uh, and so I think you would, you, you guys have a lot in common and I'll make an introduction. Thank you. Everyone I've talked to has always said, hey, have you talked to Todd? Have you read Todd's book? He is the guy when it comes to trust-based relationship building. Yeah. Well, you're you're in the play too. Um, I'm looking forward to reading your book and thank you for your time, brother. And thank you, Dave. Guys, if you got value, give it a like, share it with your mortgage friends. If you are not already following the Mortgage Coach YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe today and take care, everybody. Thanks, Dave.